um, as I come before you this evening, I want to not come through the front door. I don't want to even come through the back door. But I want to actually come through the window. In other words, I'm going to come in the house, and you would even know how I've arrived in the house. All you'll know that is I'm in the house. And so don't try to figure it out. But I ask that you kind of follow along as we take this, this journey. Over the past few months, I have been reflecting over a number of different things. And one of the things I was looking at, I was looking at my life and where I've come from and where I've been, where I am and where I would like to go. And one of the things that came back to mind, it reminds me of one of my childhood sport and some of you that were at conference last year you know that one of my, in fact my most favorite sport is track and field but i'm not going to talk about track and field tonight i want to talk about another sport and you might not be familiar with it you might be familiar with baseball but i want to talk about cricket Cricket is such a different sport than baseball. In, in, in some ways, they are kind of similar in some ways, but they aren't identical. But, you know, you know it, it's so much fun that you are playing cricket, and in the middle of the match that you are allowed to walk off the field and go have tea. I mean, are you familiar with that? I mean, how cool is that? In the middle of the game, you put everything on hold, and you decide to go have tea. Well, actually, where I was raised from 10 to about 14 in the city of Georgetown, we lived in a circle. And within the circle, we had about 48 homes. And within those homes, we had about 38 boys between the ages of 12 and 18. And we all loved to play cricket. Well, if you understand cricket, there's only 11 per team. And having all these boys that wants to play cricket, we all wouldn't be able to play at the same time. Well, granted, all might not be home at the same time. They might be out somewhere, but if you're home, you want to play. And so we're ready to get a match on, and we find out who's home and who wants to play. And all of a sudden, you have all these young men here that are ready to play. And so how do we decide who gets to play or not? Well, well, we decide we will have two captains. And we will select players. And you'll select that one, and you'll select that one, and you'll select the one until we get to 11 per team. The crazy thing about this situation is that if you are selected, you are completely ecstatic. Why is that? Because I have been chosen. And you can see the dejection on those faces that weren't selected. Why? Because they wanted to play. But because you have been chosen to play in the game, there's this excitement that comes upon you. Because you get to play today. We have been chosen. Let's define it, this word chosen. To select from a number of possibilities. Think about it. To be selected from a number of possibilities. In other words, there are several different combinations, and out of those combinations, you have been selected. You have been chosen. Is that exciting or what? Another definition. To prefer or decide or to do something. To prefer or to decide. And so someone had decided 
to choose you. Aren't you excited about that? Appearances. The word chosen appears in the Bible 119 times. 91 in the Old Testament and 28 in the New. The word choose appears in the Bible 58 times. 57 in the Old and 1 in the New. And for those of you that are good at math, we're thinking about 177 times the word choose or chosen appears in the Bible. But what's the significance? This word, choose, it's a positive word. It's a word every time we hear it, we ought to be excited. Why is that? Because I have been chosen. With all of the things and the people in the world, God has what? Chosen me. And I'm amazed that when we think of where we have come from and how God has called us, some folks can't even find it to be excited because they've been chosen. But the word itself is a positive word, and because we have been chosen, we ought to get excited about it. And sometimes we walk around as if, it's a bad thing that has happened to us. God looked down upon you in your wretched state and he decided to choose you. We ought to be excited about it. Let's come to the window. We have been chosen First of all, because of the Lord's own choosing. God himself decided to choose you. You realize that, you know, we didn't decide for ourselves that, God, I want you to choose me. But God himself, in his mercy and grace, saw us completely destitute, completely lost, and he says, I will choose you. We ought to say amen. God himself decided that. See, there's nothing that you have done, there's nothing that I have done for God to have made that choice. And so it begins with God himself choosing to choose you. Wow. When you think about it, it really grab the heart, doesn't it? We know where we've been. We know what we have done. We know the way we have been thinking for years. Some of us have been told that you will never amount to anything. Some of us have been told you are completely useless. Some have been told why are you alive? And with all those words, God said, I choose you. What have you done for God to have done that? It's not you. It's God. God in his mercy and his grace. And so he says, I will choose you. Chosen us from the state that we were in that we can be on his team. And so the second thing we want to look at, then I'm going to say the third very quickly, and then I'm going to sit down. And I know some folks from our church are wondering why can he be that brief at our church? Amen. We 
we have been chosen secondly because we were lost and in need of a savior. Completely lost. Completely messed up. And we were wanderers roaming back and forth. You know, the book of James tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in some of his ways. All of his ways. We were going back and forth. Didn't know what to choose. Didn't know where to go. Completely befuddled. Completely lost. And God said, I will choose you. And I will not only choose you, but I will put you in a path that you will be in a family that you might be secure. Colossians tells us that our lives have been hidden with Christ in God. Think about it. Our lives has been hidden with Christ in God. Have you ever thought about what that might mean? That your life has been hidden with Christ in God? Let me ask you a question. Do you know where God is? Scripture tells us no man has seen God at any time. Where is he? We're told at some point in the future that Jesus will come back, and when he comes back, and then he'll kind of unfold things before us, and then we'll be able to see God, the Father, in his fullness, in all of his glory. And as I thought of that particular verse, it reminds me that my life that I have given to Christ Jesus has been hidden with, with him in God. You know what that means? Once we have given our lives to Christ, the devil can't get it. See, for the devils to get your life, he has to find or go where God is and take it. Let me make it simple. The devil can't do that. He's a bad dude. But he's not that bad. See, he's crafty, but he doesn't know it all. See, and because God loves us so much, he took our lives and he says, I will put it in a place where it's completely secure, where no one can take it. Because he loves us. He loved you. He loves me. And so he has taken our lives, our lives that were lost. And he had chosen to choose us. And then he took that life and he has placed it in a secure place. Top of security. Might I suggest that Brinks has nothing on Jesus. ADT has nothing on God. See, when God makes a promise, he keeps it. Amen? And so if our lives have been hidden with Christ in God, it tells us now that our life is in a safe place. And so why should we worry? The King of kings and Lord of lords have chosen us. Why are we worried? It reminds me as Jesus looked over the multitude of people. And the scripture says that he had compassion on them. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were wandering aimlessly. No place to go. Everywhere he went, they followed him. Why? Because he had something to offer. We tend to follow those that 
have some kind of directions, don't we? People that walk around aimlessly, we don't want to follow them, do we? I mean, I, I guess that's the reason why some of us, we love our GPSs these days. You know, we kind of put the address in and says, okay, we're going to Shallow, New Jersey. And here we go. It take us around the back road. It took us over the mountains. It took us all over the place. But we followed that GPS, right? Because what's going to happen to them, it will bring us to Shiloh. Unless you know the way without the GPS. And finally, number three, then I'll sit down. We have been chosen because you have a purpose. You have been chosen or we have been chosen because God has a purpose for your life. See, God has not chosen us for us to sit and look cute. We have been chosen because God has a purpose for us. And some of you might be looking and saying, well, Pastor Paul, how could that be? God saved me. Yes, he has. But he has saved you for purpose. Remember a few years ago, we had the purpose-driven life that went ballistic. I mean, went all over, went, what do you call it, um, stuff they call it viral. Everybody wanted a copy of the purpose-driven life because it was the thing then. But guess what? It is still the thing today because God has created us for a purpose. That we might know who we are in him. See, a lot of times, you know, we don't do what God has called us because we don't know why we're here. Why am I alive? See, why did you make the trip to be here this weekend? God has chosen you and he has preordained for you to be here this weekend because he has a purpose. He has a plan. Are we willing to understand why God has placed us where he has? We're here for a purpose. And not only to know that we are his, but to be able to reproduce after our own kind. We had the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and preach the gospel and all those wonderful things. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the ages. It's part of our purpose. And so he has chosen you because he wants you to do what he has called you to do so that you can draw others to him. It's not good enough to be chosen. But you have to do something because you have been chosen. Remember I was talking a few minutes ago about cricket? It would have been completely useless for you to have been chosen and you just sit around and do nothing. At some point, you need to get in the game. And you need to play. The time will come when you'll have a chance to bat. And the time will come when you'll have an opportunity to feel. And so you have been chosen for the purpose of playing. And so you can get all excited. Whoa, whoa, I've been chosen. But it profits you nothing to just sit. But you need to get into the game. So now, what are you going to do? with this choice that God has made. See, you can't look at the person next to you because God called you. See, and a lot of times, you know, we, we like to look at the person next to us and find out what they're supposed to be doing. God, where are you taking them? Or what are they? No, no. God has said, look at yourself and ask yourself, what am I supposed to be doing? He has chosen you for a purpose. And you need to know what that purpose is. It's not what he's called me to do, but what he's called you to do. I pray by the time we get to the end of this weekend, 
that we will truly explore God's choosing. Knowing that he has chosen us from a wretched state. Romans tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still messed up, while we had it all wrong, while we didn't know which way to go, God chose us. He made a decision and he chose us. Now we are in his family. See, what are you going to do with it? It's not good enough just to shout, whoa, I'm in God's family. But you need to represent the family and represent the family very well. You know how you like to protect the family name? Somebody says something bad about you or about your family and you want to make sure you clear your family name up. Remember that? You ever been there? I mean, I, I, there's not a person that I've met that didn't want to clear their name up. Guess what? God's name is at stake. And he has chosen you. Brought you into his family. And now he has given you a mandate to be witnesses. So that others can come and share in the fellowship that you have with him. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for choosing us. Lord, we know that our lives would be a complete mess, would be a wreck, had it not been for you. Father, you've called us out of darkness into your glorious light. And you have called us to show forth your glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that we might take that choosing seriously. And we might truly consider what it means to have been chosen by you. Father, we have allowed a number of different things to creep into our lives. And Father, we've made them a priority in our lives. And Father, we have neglected to do those things to which you have called us. Father, each day we need to, and we do make choices. Help us to choose to do those things that are right in your sight. We thank you, Father, for the privilege and the honor that you have given us that we're able to be in this place. Not only this night, but also on tomorrow and on Sunday. And we ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you might allow us to surrender ourselves to you. We thank you, Father, for choosing us and for bringing us from off the streets and bringing us into your family. And we thank you, O oh God, now that you have commissioned us to go forth with your word that we might share with those who have not heard. Lord God, we thank you that you always make wise choices and we know, God, that your choice of choosing us, Father God, is not by accident. For your word itself tells us that it was preordained before the foundation of the earth. Father, help us to do those things that your name might be exalted. For we honor you and we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name.